I think some people think coaching is verbal, that you're just telling people what to do. Like, oh, you're in this crisis. Here's the seven things you must do. Right. Really, if you're a great coach, you're a great listener. When I'm coaching somebody, I'm looking for the obvious. I'm not always looking for, I'm gonna tell this person what to do next. I'm looking for the obvious. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for what you say, what you've missed, what you've misplaced, what you forgot to do. I'm looking for the obvious. This is a 10 part series with the legendary Tim Story talking about how to build a successful life coaching business. Today is episode four. We're talking about how to be a good listener. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, if you're gonna be a coach, I think some people think coaching is verbal, that you're just telling people what to do. Like, oh, you're in this crisis. Here's the seven things you must do. Right. Really, if you're a great coach, you're a great listener. And so let's let's talk baseball just for a second. I love it. Tommy Lasorda, what used to be the coach of the Dodgers, okay? So he was great verbally, but people don't realize that he was also great if if a if a player was struggling, he'd go on the bench and sit next to him, put his arm on him, and just listen. Like, how you feeling today? How's your family? Like during the game. Hmm. Let's take basketball. A Phil Jackson, he was very zen. He was a great listener, anywhere from Michael Jordan all the way to Dennis Rodman. So I think my strength in coaching, I'm a phenomenal listener. Not just good, I'm phenomenal. <laughs> I love it. So, so break that down. How do we become a phenomenal listener? Okay, so first you gotta have three sisters and a mother. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. I have right? two. Okay, well you gotta have three. Okay, so I'm the youngest child. Okay. So. All three sisters older than me. Okay, raised by my mother, because my father passes when I'm 10. So, my older sisters were always telling stories. I'm the youngest. I gotta listen to the stories. I'm hearing about what they're doing at school. I'm hearing about a, a guy they have a crush on. So I just learned to be this good listener. My mother has no husband. My brother is older than me, he's out doing things, so I become the listener to all the words that my mother has and my sisters have, I became a very good listener. So I would say listening is one of the most powerful things I have in my arsenal. Everybody says that. So I could, I could be coaching somebody who's, you know, super well known or not as well known. And they'll say, this is wild. I feel like you really listen to me. Be a good listener. I love that you say wild because that, that's been our word for the tour. Yes. Everything is wild. So it's great that... Wild is good. I love it. Yes. So I'm a good listener. And so here's, here's what's important. Is that I think in, in listening, too many people are thinking about what they're going to say next. Mm. So let's say if they're a life coach, okay, or life advisor. So they have their manual and they're like, okay, what, what's your two-year goal? What's your four-year goal? If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you want to do? Hey, pay attention to what they just said because in their last answer is probably the goal you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So let, let's say if I'm life coaching somebody, I'll say, when you were a child, what did you think about becoming? And they may say, uh, I didn't have a clue. I don't go question number two. I'll say, what do you mean you didn't have a clue? Like you you never thought of it or nobody gave you ideas about it or you never saw something that moved you? I may stick with that answer, I don't never had a clue for 30 minutes and not go to question number two. That's being a good listener. And how do you know that that's guiding you down the right path instead of just meandering around and never getting to the thing that you want to solve. Well, I think, I think that what happens, it depends on whatever the subject is. Okay. So let's, let's just work on you just for a second, just for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So, um, when you were right out of college, 
Okay. What did you think about becoming? Entrepreneur, I was running my business, not having success doing it, turned down big jobs to be an entrepreneur and make 300 bucks a month and own 30% of a company and wanted to succeed. Okay, why did you turn down big jobs? Fear of regret. I didn't want to miss out on not knowing if that company would work or not. How did that feel to turn down those jobs and then in hindsight find out that, oh my gosh, Maybe I turned down a really good opportunity that could have put me in a better position. I had, a, I had something happen a year before that made me have the strength and courage to go off and do it because I didn't want to live my entire life not knowing. I could deal with the failure and I could deal with it not working out and knowing that I could get another job. Yes. I mean, it'd be the same job, but I can get another job. This whole company thing, I didn't know if I'd have the chance again, so I had to do it. Okay, so you want me to tell you what I heard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. So number one is you had opportunities and you turned them down. Not just regular, regular means standard, normal, right? You turned down big, which is larger than normal. Right. So did you see how I, I took the word big? Yeah. And then I used big jobs. Then I said, how does it feel? How did that feel to turn down a big job? Because the big job could have left you in a big mess because you turned down the big job, right? Mm -hmm. And then we talked about that. And then you talked about your resilience and where that came from. And I let you explain that. So I got like three great points out of you in just about two and a half minutes. So how would you then use that to coach me on something I'm going through right now. Okay, so then I would say then now, are there some big opportunities that are coming your way now that seem similar to what you went through before? And you may say, oh man, this is weird that you're saying this <laughs> because there are some big things. Right. Okay, so now the first time you turn down the big, but maybe we don't turn it down this time. So we got to really figure out what this opportunity is because just because it's dressed in big this may be the big one we want to take okay see so i'm taking your big opportunity and i'm going from there then i'm saying the thing i like about you is is is, is the fact that you're resilient and then i would say to you where did you learn that resiliency you think it's innate did it come from your family did it come through going through from uh, going through hardships? So where did you get that resilience from? Parents. Okay. Yeah, my mom, immigrant, hardworking, uh, super ambitious, successful woman in a time when it was not accepted or common. Okay. So now by being a good listener, I got big opportunity. You're resilient, and it's innate. So which says to me going forward, if I start coaching you now this year and I coach you for 20 years whenever I see you I'm going to think to myself that guy somehow some way somehow some way he knows how to get through things because it's in him it's innate hmm. so, and then and then how would you find the block the the block is probably going to be found in what you say about the situation okay okay so so whatever you're going through if you verbalize what you're going through I'm still gonna remember, this guy is confident enough to pass up big stuff. This guy is resilient. This man learned things from his mother and it's now innate, it's instilled, it's a revelation. Give him any situation, he's gonna find a way around it. So like if you have a mountain, now I'm coaching you. Yeah, yeah, it's great. If you yeah. have a mountain in your life, if you don't go through it, you'll go around it. Yep. If you don't go through it or around it, your butt's going over it. Mm -hmm. Pound. Yeah. Bam. Life coaching <laughs> for free right here. <laughs> and so if I'm if I'm stuck in a situation, is it reminding me of that? Of that like this is who I am and you're going to bring that back out of me because I've forgotten? If you're stuck in a situation, we got to go back to how you got unstuck last time. Okay. So I got to use a biblical reference if you don't mind. Great. Go for it. Doctrine and world religion. So there's a little guy in the Bible named David. So he's going to fight Goliath. He goes, I killed a lion. I killed a bear. 
I think I could take down Goliath. So in coaching you, I'm going to go back to your lion, your bear, mm. to build your confidence that you could take down Goliath. See, the thing I like about you is in, in, in our dialogue, there are some things that you've gone through that are like little mini crises that have come up in the last month, right? Sure. Yeah. You killed a lion, you killed a bear, you're going to take that down too. Because you told me. Mm. You go, oh, it's, it's no big deal, I'm still alive. You killed a lion, you killed a bear, you can take that down. So by being a good listener, I listen that you killed a lion, you killed a bear, you can take down Goliath. If someone's a bad coach, they didn't kill. They didn't hear the lion and the bear story. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? I like it. I like it. Um, I'm just thinking: is is part of the reason why we need life coaches so much because people don't have anybody in their life who actually listens to them? You need the right life coach. You just don't need a life coach. You right. need because if if you're if you're a golfer, like I'm playing golf tomorrow. If you're a golfer and you have the wrong swing coach, it'll jack you up. <laughs> You need the right freaking mentors. No, man. It's not like, hear ye, hear ye. I need a life coach. No, man. You got to find the right coach that understands your swing, that understands your flow, that understands your rhythm. And they care enough about you to help you find the obvious in your life. Now, because we're talking about listening. Mm -hmm. When I'm coaching somebody, I'm looking for the obvious. I'm not always looking for, I'm gonna tell this person what to do next. I'm looking for the obvious. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for what you say, what you've missed, what you've misplaced, what you forgot to do. I'm looking for the obvious. So after talking to someone, probably for about 10 minutes, I'll find their obvious. And if somebody wants to acquire that skill to find the obvious in 10 minutes or less, Tim Story style? Be a good listener. Here's a good way to, to, to practice. Yeah. Okay. So to some of my clients, I have them wear a rubber band. Okay. And I say to them, because I life coach a lot of powerful men. I got, I got kind of one on here. Yeah. So okay. here, if I got okay. this, so it says perfect. believe. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so some, of my, some of my powerful men, they bring their job home. And their wives complain that they're not listening. So I say to them, okay, now I want you to wear this rubber band for like two weeks. And when your wife starts talking and you want to cut her off, okay. leave the room, I want you to flick the band. It reminds you to just shh mm. and listen. These guys are coming back with his reports and going, my wife was saying, what happened to you? <laughs> you sat there and listened to me talk about curtains like you really loved it. <laughs> so it's a great, it's a great, it's a great tool. Boom. You should sell Tim's story rubber bands. Boom. I might. Branded. We'll do it together. I love it. <laughs> Boom. Look, you're not listening. Watch. Boom. See? Boom. Don't you like that? It's meditative. Yes. Listen. Yeah. Being present. Be present. Listen. I'm a good listener. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.